due course, Aramaic spread throughout a vast area from Asia Minor and Afghanistan to Egypt and North Africa, reaching as far as India and leaving many traces of its presence. In Jordan, the spectacular site of Wadi Musa, or the Valley of Moses, is a prelude to the fascination of Petra, the capital of the Nabataeans, and another source of evidence of the Aramean presence. We pass through the Sikh Gorge, following one of the many canals dug out of the rock as part of a complex irrigation system for which the Aramean Nabataeans became famous. It leads us directly to the Pink City, as Petra is called, in reference to the color of the sandstone from which, one might say, it is sculpted. Aramaic, written in a distinctive local script, was the language of the Nabataeans who flourished from the first century BC to the first century AD. They carved their capital out of the living rock. In truth, Petra was a stronghold, located strategically on the main route between the north and south of the Arab Peninsula, traveled by caravans with precious loads of incense and myrrh from Arabia, spices and silks from India, ivory from Africa, and precious skins. From this well-protected, dominant position, it was easy to raise tolls, to demand exorbitant sums for food, shelter and stabling, and to play a key role in the commerce between merchants and caravaneers. And of course, it was easy to plunder too. Thus, the Aramean Nabataeans became rich and powerful. Then, in 106 AD, the Romans incorporated the kingdom of Petra into the Roman Empire, making it the capital of the new province of Arabia. This led to the development of new caravan routes, slowly diverting trade away from Petra and causing its decline. The Nabataeans' own dialect of Aramaic has survived in inscriptions on the pediments of buildings and temples, on rocks and stones, at the base of votive capitals, and on the walls of gullies. In the latter case, the writing is in the guise of implorations to the gods to avert disaster in the event of flash floods that would race through the gorges, sweeping away everything in their path.
a garden of 500,000 palm trees, and the imposing vestiges of what was once a large Roman city in the middle of the desert are the most remarkable characteristics of Palmyra, the ancient Tadmor in the heart of Syria, another hub of the Aramaic linguistic area. As in Petra, traces of the Aramaic idiom that used to be spoken here can still be found. The extraordinary story of this city features, among others, Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra, one of the greatest women of ancient times. Beautiful, noble, ambitious, a charismatic leader, and an indefatigable horsewoman, Zenobia addressed her people in Aramaic, wearing a helmet and purple robes. For a short period, the armies of Palmyra even managed to seize control of many of the eastern provinces of the Roman Empire. This was in the day of the Emperor Aurelian, who eventually managed to capture Palmyra and take Queen Zenobia prisoner. Since very early times, the oasis was inhabited by the Aramaeans, and here, people spoke Aramaic of Palmyra. Traces of that language can be seen on the Roman colonnade along the main road. Beneath the inscriptions in Greek are the same words in Aramaic. Qabura dina abad bil hazai bar buraiki bar bil hazai Today, in the local museum, the voice of a scholar reading those Aramaic inscriptions as though they were current idiom gives the impression of being caught in a time warp. Hatra in Iraq was founded in the 1st century BC and was destroyed by the Persians early in the 3rd century AD. More than 300 Aramaic inscriptions have been found here, some in the Aramaic dialect of Hatra. Many are of great historical importance. Most of these inscriptions are now preserved in the Museum of Mosul and in Baghdad, together with statues and other relics found at the site. By the second half of the 5th century BC, Aramaic had become the most widespread language in Palestine, as everyday documents inscribed on pottery indicate. In 1947, at Qumran on the shores of the Dead Sea, a Bedouin boy looking for a goat that had wandered off entered a cave untouched by time and stumbled upon what is probably the most important archaeological find ever made in the Holy Land, a terracotta jar containing the oldest group of scrolls ever discovered of biblical and non-biblical manuscripts. It was the first of a series of such scrolls that subsequently came to light in 11 caves, an unprecedented treasure that continues to fire the imagination and polarize the interest of scholars around the world. One of the first and best preserved of the scrolls contained the Book of Isaiah, copied many centuries earlier 